Welcome, class, to the shipyard. I will be your teacher, Admiral Montgomery. Yes, I know this is cheesy. My apologies. But this is a new series, a strategy series. About a month ago, I put out a call on the Facebook uh, Attack Wing community, and I said, hey, what kind of things do you wish you had known when you started playing the game? Or as a new player, an interested player, what kind of things do you wish you knew? So here's the first one. Uh, David Strafford, uh, a member, said, how do I decide what action to do? Uh, how do I balance action economy? So we've got a few things to consider. Uh, the first is that I need to make sure I'm broadcasting, recording the correct window. Uh, but yes. So you have a few options. Battle stations, when you can get them. Um, hits. Hits occur four out of eight. Right? That's 50%. Now, you had battle stations in there. Now you're, con now you're converting 6 out of 8, or 75%. Okay, target lock. You're still likely to hit half the time. And your rerolls will then hit another half of that time. So your rerolls, you're only going to miss a quarter of the time. And so we can say that your results will end up being 75% hits. Or again, 6 out of 8. The nice thing about target lock is this persists round to round. Battle stations, the bonus here is it can be used on defense. So, when do you want to have battle stations? Well, for sure, if you're a cloaking ship. Yeah, absolutely. Right, if you or a Klingon ship, or a Romulan ship, or you uh, are, are choosing to run a cloaking device, and, and that's not the best idea, but let's say you're playing it thematically, and, and you're a mirror ship or a Federation ship, I want to think those are the only cloaking device upgrades, or you're running a cloaking device cross-faction play. Um... And those exist. If your ship has battle stations or you have access to a battle stations action and, and more of those exist now, there's captains, there's crew upgrades that, that give you battle stations, then having a battle stations saved for defense might not be a bad idea. Because uh, remember, you're rolling four extra dice your defense dice only hit three out of eight times. Battle stations turn that into five out of eight, which is 62.5% time. So if you're doing, uh, let's say you're rolling five dice, five times 0.625. So that gives you an average of three defense dice. Yeah, that means your attack's going to stink. But uh, it means you might live. Now, of course, there's better ways to be defensive. Uh, Hood Riker, um, Elizabeth Shelby, and, and that's a different video. But battle stations on defense is actually a nice idea. Uh, target lock. Of course, we've got this idea that it, it lasts round to round. The downside, so this is these are bonuses. Uh, 
the downside to target lock is you can't can't do it to a permanently or to a, a long term cloaked ship. Battle stations don't really have that downside. And you know what? I'm thinking I need to make this just a little bit bigger. And I probably need to make my head just a little bit smaller. Okay. We'll shift me down here to the corner. All right. Hopefully that shows up a little bit better for you guys. Uh, but yeah. So target lock does carry this, this negative, but it's got a really nice upshot to it. Now, I'm going to pause for a moment. When do you want to use a target lock? Right, you've, you've got your target lock, you've rolled dice. Uh, let, let's say you're firing with, with four dice or five dice. If you, uh, we'll take the four die scenario first. If you have two dice that don't hit and all you have is a target lock, you want to spend your target lock. If you have one die that has missed, you really have to evaluate the scenario you're in. Are you the first ship? Might you strip their shields? Might you be able to get that finishing killing blow on an enemy vessel? If either of those things are, are possible, um, or let's say you have a, a crit or two uh, in your already existing dice. Um, then you might consider spending your target lock. Um, also, you know the combos that exist on your ship. So if you're gaining target locks frequently, then of course it's a good idea. The downside, a reason not to use it, is if you are facing a cloaking fleet and it's tough to get target locks, you might want to hold your target lock. Or if you have a secondary weapon that depends upon a target lock, you might want to save your target lock to use that secondary weapon and have battle stations next round to be able to have quality with your secondary weapon shot. Another bonus of target lock is rerolls. You can get crits. Um, so I guess the downside to battle stations is no crits on conversions. Now, that's this is just. Battle stations and target lock. We need to talk about scan. Now scan does not affect your raw dice, but it has a ton of bonuses. It's a combo enabler. And easier to hit opponent. That's really what scan is there for. Um, so when, when do you scan? Well, you scan because it makes what you're doing better. Uh, you scan to win more. Uh, you scan when you are not in danger of dying and you scan to make sure you're shot hits home um my preference is to battle stations or target lock then i will scan then i will evade unless i have a super defensive ship that needs evade in which case i will evade then i will scan um, and i might evade before i do either of those offensive actions 
Uh, evade is certainty. Uh, live longer. Downside uh, only works if you get shot at. And only works once. Yeah, evade has felt like the weakest action now. It, it just doesn't do a whole lot. And, and that's tough. Um, now, other things that exist, right? Uh, ship actions captain actions crew actions and I'll say crew slash upgrade not cat ions or cations actions that's where that C came from all right uh, it's late when I'm recording all right these three really I lump into one So we'll, we'll just kind of highlight them. All right. These three. These three you want to be careful of. I'm not saying they're bad. But I'm saying you need to be cautious. Some people get in a habit of saying, Oh, my ship does this really awesome thing. But it's an action. My captain does this really awesome thing, but it's an it's an action too. Oh, and I've got all these crew and and weapons and and talents that do awesome things, but they're actions. You know what? You have one action around. If your if you decide to use your action on your captain, you're not using it on your ship. You're not using it to get battle stations. You're not using it to get a target lock. You're not evading. You're not scanning. So that action better be worth it. Now, there's plenty of reasons to run a captain and select a captain besides the text that they give. And I'm not saying you need to use it all the time, right? Uh, infamously, I will run Admiral Decker, uh, and I will not use his action all the time. Uh, same with Admiral Q. Right? And, and let me just... Let me just pull this up so we're not... Uh, you going to... Here. Go here into Admirals. Uh, Q. Right? Here's Q as an admiral, I'm not always going to want to rotate my ship. And th that's a fleet action. That gives me a ton of room, right? And and same goes for Decker. Right, target a ship within range one of your ship, including your own ship. Ship gets an extra attack die and suffers damage to its hull. Right, very situational admiral, but very powerful admiral. Uh, I'll come back here. You have to be thoughtful. Now, I'll finish with this. Cloak and sensor echo. It used to be... Now, I'm, I'm talking way back when this game came out. That cloak... Uh, cloak was really good when it came out. But there was also no defensive quality now we have things like klingon cloaking device Let's see i've learned i gotta show cards klingon cloaking device right if your cloak convert a blink into an evade very annoying card very good card very annoying card right we've got interface generator Right. After all dice have been rolled, if your cloak discard the card, cancel the attack, you take one hit. Right? Limit one per ship, but you still get to know what's happening. 
that those two cards have made cloaking better you understand what's coming at you and you get to either make your dice better or say i'm not taking it i'm done now i'm starting to get a little bit into build uh, how you build and that's coming but i think in order to fully understand action selection you need to be aware of what what opportunities you're giving up. See, there's a theory in economics called opportunity cost. And I think it applies to the world of gaming equally well. You see, admirals are ranked it's very easy to rank admirals because you you pick one admiral to run on your fleet if any and how good an admiral is depends upon a your fleet but b the opportunity cost of not running a different admiral it's the same reason we can compare all the different Jean-Luc Picard and Locutus captains because running one of them means you're not running any other of them. It's the opportunity cost of giving them up. I say all of that to say that cloaking is fantastic. It comes with an opportunity cost. You're giving up your shields. So do you cloak all the time? No! No, of course not. Downside, no shields. Bonuses. Plus four defense dice. To all uh, defense rolls. Uh, plus. Uh, and and it persists. A sensor echo. Sensor echo is fantastic. Get out of a bad situation. Get closer, further away. Downside. If low captain skill, not super helpful. You want to see a perfect example of sensor echoing not being super helpful? Watch my game against M5, my Kobayashi Maru live stream play against M5. There are several moments where the Klingon ships sensor echo. And you think, oh great, they're sensor, e sensor echoing. But it doesn't actually help them because they don't know where I'm going to be. And then I take a, I take a communications failure, so I'm skill zero. And they get to sensor echo after. And they are much more precise with knowing which way to sensor echo because they know exactly where I'm going to be. It is such a different game for the middle part where I am stuck moving before them and they get to really focus in on me. Um, so sensor echo comes with the caveat of if you're going to make really good use of it, you have to go high captain skill, not like skill 12. Don't, you don't have to run Gen Con on it. Uh, what do I mean by Gen Con, right? You don't have to run the con, this con, Con skill six that was a Gen Con promo that says if any captain in play has a higher skill number than this con, con skill equals that con skill number, which is a copy, and you copy, then you modify, so you can actually boost your con up higher if you throw an admiral on there. And so con can go to uh, 12, 14, something like that. It's it's a high number you can get to a pretty high captain skill number. Um, 
But yeah, you don't need to do that on the Alpha Hunter or the Saran or anything like that. Um, those are really good sensor echo ships. If you want some fun that really teaches you the importance of maneuvering, look at those ships. Look into the Alpha Hunter, right? This one here, after you move, you may perform a sensor echo action with the one template and then also the Saran. After you attack, you can perform a two bank maneuver. I mean, that's not a, as much sensor echoing, um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, also what I will say is that the more free actions you can get in, the more combo free actions. Uh, what do I mean by that? Things like Admiral Gowron. Uh, if you don't have a Battle Stations token, place one there. In addition, if your ship is a Klingon ship with a Klingon captain, you may immediately perform an additional action as your free action. Great. And then something like Lursa, you can perform a Cloak or a Sensor Echo action as a free action. If your ship has the appropriate action on its action bar, um, and that's Lursa as a, a captain or crew. Um, Betor doesn't help you. Um, but yeah, the, the point there is those free things are still doing actions, and now you get more. And some, you know, sometimes more can be very overwhelming. And I'm not saying dive into all of that right now. Because I, I don't want you to get lost. But I am trying to encourage you to don't, don't get in the habit of running an enterprise. Uh, the, the animated enterprise. Right? Uh... Don't, don't run this enterprise. Uh, I'll find it here. Action. Repair up to three uh, shields on this ship. Right? Cool action in and of itself. But don't try to run that enterprise with um, action Sulu to add to agility for the rest of this round. Each time you defend, convert a battle station into an evade. Right, don't do that with Action Kirk as a captain because you're never going to have enough actions or even, even something like Spock. If your ship has a scan token beside it, when you attack, you can convert all your battle stations into hits, right? You go, oh, but Spock isn't an action. But when are you ever going to have a scan token? Right? Your ship wants an action to repair shields every so often. Your ship wants an action for Sulu to be more defensive frequently. Your ship wants a scan action to boost Spock, to let Spock do a battle stations conversion and be more aggressive on offense. And it wants that all the time it can make an attack. So don't try to force too many things that crave actions. You want passive abilities or things that only need to happen every rare once in a while. Conditional things. The Enterprise is fine. An action to repair three shields when it's needed is great action. But having Spock and Sulu where you need to scan all the time and defend more all the time it's not helpful so keep all that in mind I know there's a lot going on but if you if you really boil it down target lock battle stations I per personally prefer battle stations it fits the way I play more 
although I am starting to lean more towards target locks only because torpedoes are getting better. Um, but I, I still like I, I still like both of these, and you say, why not both? To which I answer, please give me both. Uh, but I, I run both of these. I avoid cloaking like the plague because my defense dice rolls are terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, scanning, I rarely do, and evading is very specific to ships and and situations. Really, it boils down to, am I in a situation where I need to evade, where I believe that this ship might get an extra round or get to its shot if I take an evade, whereas if I don't, I'm not getting out of it. Those are at least some things that go through my head. Um, and really, scan is this combo enabler. If you don't have a combo, if you don't have anything that builds off of scan, you typically don't need to scan unless you already have target lock battle stations. If you've gotten a free battle station, an existing target lock, by all means scan and go from there. All right, um, this video is getting close to a half hour. I, I think that's kind of going to be what uh, this series is. It's about a half hour lecture, um, mini lecture, but lecture on an aspect of the game. So again, um, thank you to David Strafford um, for the action economy uh, idea, the, the question there. Uh, you can see some of our upcoming lectures. Um, build balance, importance of flying, Borg spheres, are they scary? Target priority, how I learned to stop worrying and love the ox, maneuvering and abilities, all about that. I'm not throwing away my one shot, a guide to strategically using discard abilities. Uh, Effective sensor echo. So we will be expanding upon everything we talked about here on sensor echo. Um, more than just a joust. How to turn battles for more than just a straight on fight. Uh, building psychology. That'll be messy. Uh, but that'll be a lot of fun. And then deploy the fleet. How do you actually set your fleet up? Uh, this order is not the order we're going in. Uh, deploy the fleet will probably happen very soon uh, because we got to start somewhere. We have to actually set our fleet up. Uh, but yeah, I would encourage you for a little further reading or watching, go back, listen to some of my Build Academy videos. That is at least the kind of initial starting point, right? That also had some, some of this class element where, where we're going through ideas. But yeah, um, and of course, let me know what you think of this series. Uh, let me know what else you'd like to see, right? This is just 12 videos. Um, and it reached, granted, a, a fair number of people, but this channel reaches different people too. And, um, and of course, if you have different ideas and you'd like to share something, I'm all for guest lecturers. I'm all for people coming in and talking about ideas. I'm not the only person. Um, I'm... I'm a voice, but I'm not the best Star Trek Attack Wing player by any means. So yeah. All right. Uh, thank you all for uh, watching this long. If you watch till the end, uh, leave a comment for um, the crazy Maki Vulcan. I don't know. That just seemed fun. Uh, okay. We'll see you next time. Class dismissed.